Ayo, so katatapos lang natin kay Stel. What nobody understands about Stel of SB19. Ngayon naman ay what nobody understands about Ken of SB19. So, huwag na natin patagal patagalin. Let's start. Uy, angas. What nobody understands about Ken of SB19. Sino ang makakalimutan? Hindi <laughs> pong patapos na, nagkamali pa siya. <laughs> Bakit pa namin, Ken? Bakit si Ken? Bakit si Ken? Please stop it. Ano kaya yun? Ken is in my opinion, the most successful idol in P-pop history. Most fans see him as someone who's living the life most of us can only dream of. But in reality, yeah. there's a lot more going on behind all the glitz and glamour. So in today's video, we will reveal the challenges he had to go through just to get where he is today. From being a scrawny kid who only ate instant oh, noodles on his birthdays to becoming the CEO of his own company. Huh? I know, Ken's My story is like the definition of rags to riches. And the haters are not having it. He quickly became one of the most polarizing figures in the P-pop industry. But before we talk about all that, let's talk about his humble beginnings because he's straight up inspiring. Yay! It all started in Pagadian, Zamboanga del Sur. Mindanao? This is the countryside where Felipe John Suson was raised. His mom wanted to name him Kenji, but his grandpa Felipe insisted to name him Felipe. Felipe. He was the youngest member of a family that barely had anything financially. They were very poor that instead of a cake on his birthday, all he gets is a plate of instant noodles. Life was so hard that having fried chicken was heaven for him. So it quickly became his all-time favorite. Because mm -hmm. of this, both of his parents had to go overseas to find better paying jobs to support the education of Ken and his older sister. He had to be taken under the care of his grandparents. He then grew up in a church Thank and you. his grandpa was the pastor. He was just a scrawny kid who likes mathematics and no? his first talent. So he went on to become an editorial cartoonist in school. Ooh. Family gatherings in Fun the fact, I was an editorial writer in high school. And Kent's extended family Kent na na mong college, editorial writer pa din ako. during these occasions because he was always asked to sing. <laughs> there was some sources that Ken had a very good singing voice as a kid but lost his confidence when puberty hit because it gave him an ultra ah. deep voice which turned out to become Bosses. one of his greatest assets in the future because of the dude named Pablo. I never thought that. Anyway, his new learned his first musical instrument without anyone teaching him. So he ended up becoming a softball guitarist, but later fixed it as he learned more. He was also active in sports representing his school in regional tournaments. He played some table tennis and sepak takraw as a spiker. For those wow. who don't know, this position requires exceptional skills and <laughs> so so jumps to block <laughs> the, the teacher saw this as a potential that can translate into good dancing, so he was offered to join the dance club for better grades. <laughs> he was hesitant at first, but when he tried, you all know what happened next. What? Watching his early clips feels like he was born to dance. <laughs> he was even hired by his school to choreograph some eh. dance routines. He then moved to Cagayan de Oro to study architecture. Cagayan de Oro, Mindanao pa din yun, no? Remember the dance crews called Excite, GA7, and Amigo7. His last two Ganda games talaga so music. Good. In fact, Ken had a crewmate named Joshua who went on to become a member of a successful international idol group in the future called Z-Boys. They were beating everybody in the countryside so there was no point in competing there anymore. It was time for the big leagues. They got invited to join major K-pop dance competitions and this was the first time when Ken met other SB19 would-be members. Ah. Not as brothers but as enemies. 
In one particular contest, Joshi's crew defeated Ken's because they already had a GOAT status in the industry at the time. Mm. Ken accepted defeat gracefully and even asked to be trained by Josh, which actually surprised him because he thought Ken was a show off. He told me, he told me, Idol Josh, Idol Josh, he told me, he told me, Idol Josh. Pasali naman ako sa ganun nyo. Patraining naman ako sa grupo nyo. Kahit sa gilid lang ako. But because of their distance, the training together never happened. Minda na ako kasi. And then went home to continue his studies. Fast forward to 2017, he received a message from Josh. It was an invite to audition for the open mind. But there's one problem. Ken had no money. So Josh was like, no problem. I'll take care of it. Papa was telling his grandma about stopping school to pursue it, and she was very hesitant because she thought it was a scam, and his parents overseas would have automatically said no. But Ken was so close to his grandma that he managed to convince her to go with him. <laughs> so our country boy took off to pursue his dreams. Yes. He had nothing with him except his phone, his clothes, and a 1,500 peso. One five. This time, when he arrived at the airport, there was no crew. It was all him. So imagine how that must have felt. Anyway, he took a taxi to SBT Talent Camp and of course, the drivers camped him. He had to... <laughs> Fun fact then, nung first time kong bumiyahe from Pangasinan, kasi nga galing din akong probinsya. And I... I enrolled college in Cavite, so... Kailangan kong bumiyahe from Pangasinan, province namin to Cavite. First time kong bumiyahe noon. Alam niyo ba na parang na-scam din ako ng parang ng driver, ng driver kasi parang ang mahal ng siningil niya sa akin. Ayun, 150 din yata yung binayad ko noon eh. Kahit na sabi ni Ate dapat 30 lang dapat. Hmm. Kasi nga <laughs> ko, ang hirap din talaga mamula from province, babiyahe ka ng Maynila. Kaya dapat kapag ka bumabiyahe ka and kapag ka nakipagkwentuhan ka dun sa driver at tinatanong ka niya about saan ka galing, ganyan, saan ka papunta, ganyan, huwag mong sasabihin na ikaw ay galing sa probinsya. Kasi kapag ka sinabi mo na ako ay galing sa probinsya, pupunta ako ng, sa ganito, sa kamag-anak ko, sa Maynila, ganyan, ano, magtitake advantage sila sa sa'yo. Kasi nga, hindi mo, parang ina-assume nila na hindi mo alam yung rate or yung pamasahe na dapat ay yung appropriate na rate na pamasahe. Kaya minabahal, minamahalan nila yung, pinataasan nila yung pamasahe. Yun. Ay, grabe naman. To pay 600 pesos for a supposedly 150 mm -hmm. peso trip. What a rip. 1.5 minus 600. He finally met 900 na. And started training with them for a year while crashing into a distant relative's Manok. house to rest up. He slept on the floor, not with a comforter, but a banig. Because if he didn't, he would be homeless. Mm -hmm. Ken had no salary when he was still training, so he moonlighted as a small-time model to survive. Mm -hmm. Which is an experience that would play a big role in his future. The dude was literally fighting for his dreams every single day. So here comes 2018 when they find out and though it was a rocky start, Ayun, confirm they tila luha yung first na song nila. The best P-pop group God has ever created. If you want to know more about their story as a group, check out the SB19 story series I'm doing. Check ko yan after ng series na to. You can also join the highest tier of our channel's membership if you're interested to be credited as one of the executive producers. So how did Ken become the most polarizing P-pop idol? Like, how is he either obsessively loved by fans or obsessively hated by bashers? Well, he has this persona of a badass dude who doesn't give a shit. And if you combine that with one of the many accusations thrown at him, then they got themselves a new P-pop villain in the making. But there's one thing in common between all those issues. They lack evidence. I'm cute. There are a few exceptions though. But you can't say a person is arrogant just because he looks cool and badass. Kaya nga, uh, he's even a softie. Diba pwede confident lang siya sa sarili niya. Moments. His awkwardness as a kid is still there and this TikTok clip says it all. Me and you and you and me, just us and your friend Steve. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do Steve. Do 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 do
Also, you can't just call a person lazy just because you've seen a few clips of him sleeping. I mean, isn't it a result of him working too hard? Being yeah. an idol and running your own clothing company at the same time? Haters will always have, will always have something to say. But now, he made it happen. He managed to build a company that sold out merch in just minutes. It's insane. Ah, merch. It's even rumored that his company is now worth more than a Superior million. Superior Whether it's true or not, it put an even bigger target on his back. And haters started coming up with even more ridiculous claims. Like accusing him of copying two K-pop music videos just because they have a similar vibe. This was easily debunked. Ito na na naman tayo eh. Sa so pagko-compare-compare. So compare. Link down in the description. His main dancer position got also heavily criticized because of one single clip of him messing up on live TV. It wasn't fair in my opinion because Ken has always been consistent in his dance performances. Ayan, hindi mo pwede mapagod guys. About how good huh? he is. Ken never fired back. Or did he? Yes, dami account. So why does the poultry still exist and are still growing in numbers after all the bashing? So never let your haters win. Wag ka magpapapekto sa nila. Capability to back it up. Crash down. Capabilities. What's crazy about Ken is plural capabilities. Enough talent like his exceptional dancing and singing that is enough to fulfill a main vocal role. Grabe naman yun. Yet he still has a lot of secrets. I'm telling you, man, this guy is a living anime character. <laughs> yeah, hi. Have you Grabe heard of is also a CEO? A dancer who is known for his aerial flips but never tells us that he can also break that. Wow. A singer who writes and co-produces his own songs. A musician that plays guitar. And can even beatbox. A fashion influencer. A man who plays sports like basketball, billiards, volleyball, badminton, table tennis, boxing. Decent <laughs> A skater boy. Na a, na artist, a philanthropist. And most especially, a man of faith. I initially thought that the Superior Sound brand was all about him, but I was quickly proven wrong when I found this Bible verse underneath his Bulan CD, Hebrews 1, 5-14. The entire passage is lengthy, but it all boils down to Christ being the superior of all beings. I mean, all of us have different religions, some don't mm. even have one. But I just respect people like him who stand firm behind their beliefs. Yes. As of today, Ken has established himself as an arguably the most successful P-pop idol and the richest among his co-members. And it's just the Hello. beginning. They're still on their way to introducing Filipino music to the world through the US as of the making of this video. And his This was 10 months ago. The first one to ever do. Last year 2022. So what have you story? For me, it was his persistence and willingness to take risks. Have you ever noticed that sometimes <laughs> it's your loved ones that said no to your aspirations? Yes. Because, you know, they care about you. They don't want you to fail and all that. Do you know how many people have had visions, ideas, and huge career moves that they were about to do, but they allowed the word no to stop them? For all I know, you might be one of those people. The difference with Ken is that he never gave the power to the word no. It was his own group.
So, na-realize ko sa video na to, haters will always have something to say about you, about everything that you do in your life. At wala kang magagawa doon. At hindi mo rin responsibility na mag-respond o maapektuhan sa mga bagay na yun. Kasi buhay mo yan eh. Ay, nakakainis talagang ibang mga tao. Nakakagigil. <laughs> Ayun. So, that was Ken. Sa Ken, kay Ken naman, ayun, yung pagiging probinsyano niya, iba from Mindanao siya, ayun. Ako naman ay from Pangasinan. So, parang nakarelate ako doon na from probinsyano ka at luluwas ka ng Maynila, ganyan, or ibang lugar para sa pangarap mo. Medyo nakarelate din ako doon kasi nung senior high school ako, I was choosing or I was hesitant to enroll in college sa Cavite. Kasi nga, masyadong malayo, ganyan, and uh, parang ayaw din akong payagan ng nanay ko o ng family ko. Pero, pinilit ko talaga, kasi nandun, nandun naman si na ate eh. Dalawa yung ate ko dun sa Cavite. Nandun naman si na ate eh. eh. Sila yung, ano, makasama ko doon, sabi kong ganun. And, uh, I really wanted to you know, go out of my comfort zone and uh, I really met new friends sa Cavite and I'm really thankful na ginawa ko yung choice na yun for myself na umalis at mag-aral sa ibang lugar para mas mapalabu ko pa yung sarili ko because you will never grow when you stay or when you are stuck at your comfort zone so you really have to, you know, um, explore more, explore more <clears throat> Nabubulol na ako. Explore more and uh, really push yourself to the limits. Um, so far, si number one ko na pinaka-relatable sa akin. Personally ha, kasi syempre, naroon kaya nga tinatawag na bias, di ba? Kasi pinili natin sila dahil bias tayo. So, Para sa akin si Ken, yung pinakamalapit, pinakamalapit sa experiences ko. And uh, parang sa kanya ako nakaka-relate the most. So, Ken might be my bias among the five. Pero meron pang Josh and Justin. So, hindi natin malalaman. And number two ko si Pablo. Kasi si Pablo ay writer din. So, relate ako doon kasi writer din ako. Ayun. So, sunod natin ay si Josh. Ayun. Tatapusin ko na ito kasi next week ay maging busy ako sa for preparation sa graduation. Ayun. So, apat na ba to? Wala ba si Justin? What nobody understands about Justin? Wala ba? Hanapin ko na lang mamaya. Ayun. So, next video, Josh. Thank you for watching.